Hi, I'm Dr. Kurt Waller. The title of this mechanisms video is steroidal hormone pathways and pregnenolone steel. So this video is sponsored by Integrative Medicine Academy. Integrative Medicine Academy is a comprehensive online academy of different mastery courses in various integrative medicine topics. For more information, you can go to integrativemedicineacademy.com to get a full list of our courses. You can also email us at integrativemedicineacademy at gmail.com with any questions. Here is the disclaimer for this video, understanding that the content of this video is for educational purposes only. So let's get into the topic here and what is pregnenolone steel and does it exist? Is this something that actually exists physiologically within the body? So this has been a topic of sort of long debate now for a number of years and pregnenolone steel was a concept and, and honestly still is in my opinion a useful thing to describe particularly for patients just to get an understanding of how stress over time could contribute to hormone imbalances so this is the steroid hormone principle pathways i've used this in many of my lectures we also incorporate this a chart or this uh, image here into our hormone mastery course so we have cholesterol up top that feeds into pregnenolone. Pregnenolone can become progesterone, which can become cortisol or aldosterone. And then pregnenolone becomes DHEA, and DHEA then is related to testosterone as well as estrogen. And so things are flowing through these different pathways based on enzymatic reactions and the amount of a substance as well under physiological need within a given individual. And the concept of pregnenolone steel under chronic stress, again, has been a concept that's existed now in the functional medicine world with regards to hormone physiology as a way to sort of teach or visualize the fact that we can run into deficits of hormones based on stress. And so the idea is that pregnenolone is pulled in the direction of progesterone to cortisol with the idea that feeling is is that the body is preferentially trying to maintain cortisol levels under stress at the detriment of aldosterone at the detriment of DHEA or testosterone or estradiol and so it makes it appear that somehow there's this large pool of pregnenolone that is already pre-made and existing that somehow we're drawing from to maintain cortisol levels and it doesn't exactly work that way the pregnenolone steel concept concept is still valuable but it's important to understand what really is happening at a cellular level and a lot of this was brought forth by a researcher by the name of thomas gilliam's phd very good book if you want to delve into this topic in more detail, lifestylematrix.com. The name of the book was The Role of Stress in the HPA Axis in Chronic Disease Management. Okay, and so according to Dr. Gilliams, is that each zone within the adrenal cortex has its own unique enzyme system that allows for hormone production that's unique to that particular zone. So for example, the zona glomerulosa expresses an enzyme CYP11B2, which is the gene essentially that is linked to that particular area related to the hormones in that particular zone. And that allows, for example, aldosterone to be produced from pregnenolone under the stimulation of what's called the renin angiotensin system, which is actually linked to cardiovascular function. So changes in cardiovascular physiology things that are also happening at the kidney level will show an increase of the renin angiotensin system, which will send signals into that zone to make aldosterone based off of its precursor pregnenolone. But we don't have this pre-made pregnenolone that's just sitting in that zone waiting to be used. It, it happens under a signal based on need. Same thing with the zona fasciculata and zona reticularis, right? They have a different gene that controls an enzyme that 
is producing cortisol, for example. And so it's also creating that cortisol based off of a precursor of pregnenolone. So again, the zona glomerulosa is the CYP11B2. The reticularis and the fasciculata is controlled by the gene of CYP11beta2. But we don't have this pool of pregnenolone that's just sitting there, already pre-made, just kind of waiting to be used. The reactions are very specific to each zone, and they're under directions, obviously, from cellular biological signals that are sending signals into these zones based on need to produce different hormones. And so you could make the case that if the body is preferentially sending signals for cortisol, that maybe there's some type of uh, preferential use of pregnenolone, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be producing aldosterone or not be producing some downstream sex hormones uh, from progesterone as well, or pro the progesterone precursors that exist from a molecular standpoint within these particular zones. And so aldosterone, we know, gets produced in the glomerulosa, cortisol in the fasciculata, DHEA in the reticularis. So there is enzymatic reactions that exist within the, in these particular zones that are making these unique hormones. And certainly pregnenolone is sort of the higher up or master hormone, if you will, that is being used to make each of these hormones in these particular zones, but there's not this pre-made pool of pregnenolone that's sitting out there just being drawn upon under a chronic stress response. So we get into this topic in, in much more detail and many other important topics with regards to hormone physiology, metabolism, deficiency states, excess states, looking at progesterone, DHEA, thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, et cetera, within our Hormone Mastery course. So for more information about the Hormone Mastery course, you can go to hormonemasterycourse.com. If you are interested in looking at our other mastery courses, from autism to organic acid testing to mitochondrial issues to toxicity, et cetera, please go to integrativemedicineacademy.com. You can also email us at integrativemedicineacademy at gmail. Dot com. So again, I am Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrated Medicine Academy. Thank you.